High voltage air ionization is one of the most observed phenomena in daily life. Air ionization can be observed in lightning in the middle of thunderstorms, gas ignition on your gas stove, and on Tesla coils. One such example is this high frequency 25 kilovolt DC discharge. The violent color is due to the emission spectrum characteristics of air, which is usually due to nitrogen and oxygen. However, this particular ionization phenomenon we are looking at is called a corona discharge. Corona discharge is not necessarily a spark or electrical arc. It is rather the intermediate stage for creating an electric arc. That is because voltage between the conductor pair is not high enough to create a stable lasting arc. In other words, with a given voltage of 25 kilovolts, the distance between the conductors is not close enough to create a lasting arc. As you can see, there are some sparks created as my shaky hand carries the electrode closer to the fork. This exemplifies what is called the spark gap. A spark gap is the distance at which an arc forms. The spark gap mainly depends on the voltage, gas pressure, breakdown voltage of the gas, and other conductive medium content in the environment such as water vapor. To simplify, we can use the value of 3 kilovolts per millimeter for air breakdown. Now, you are looking at a corona discharge at different spark gap distances. In this case, the spark gap is about 2 inches or 5 centimeters. If we do a simple calculation, dividing 25 kilovolts by 50 millimeters it is about 0.5 kilovolts per millimeter, which is smaller than the required air breakdown electric field of 3 kilovolts per millimeter. Thus, we observe only a corona discharge instead of an arc. Now, I have reduced the spark gap down to 40 millimeters. Still no continuous sparks, but we do observe periodic discharge. Although the electric field is less than 3 kilovolts per millimeter, the shape of the electrode we are using comes to a sharp point. This causes charge to concentrate at the tip of the electrode over time. When enough charge accumulates at the tip, some of the charge can escape from the electrode, creating the electrical bridge between electrodes and eventually creating an arc. This implies that the shape of the electrode is also a great factor for creating arc discharge. Now the gap is less than 10 millimeters, which is closer to the air breakdown electric field. High voltage electrical arcs provide enough energy for a chemical reaction to occur. In this case, nitrogen and oxygen are the major reactants, and ozone, nitric oxide, nitrogen dioxide are created. If there is a large amount of water vapor, it also creates nitric acid. So we can pr produce these substances in an enclosed chamber, and we will do that in future videos. Now we will look at different dielectric materials and their electrical breakdown characteristics. We will use air as a good example of a dielectric material. This is a sealed glass tube which has low pressure argon inside. I have wrapped two aluminum foil sheets around it in order to make two cylindrical electrodes. 25 kilovolts is enough to ionize the argon, or any noble gas for that matter, but we don't see the full ionization of the argon gas. This is because the electric field can flow outside of the gas chamber more easily rather than the inside. Electrons always find the easiest path between two conductors. So, if the electrodes were inside the glass chamber, the argon gas would be fully ionized and we can see cold argon plasma. You can see the glass tube slightly glows and some sparks are created inside of the glass tube. This indicates that some of the electric field is flowing through the glass tube and back to the aluminum electrode. Another example of dielectric materials is aluminum oxide, or ceramics. As you can see, the spark is not created directly through the ceramic. It always finds its path directly to the metal conductor. Same story for plastics. If the voltage does not exceed the dielectric breakdown voltage, no arc will occur. However, if the voltage does exceed the dielectric breakdown voltage of that particular plastic, the spark can be created directly through it. Tap water is another interesting example. Here, there is some spark between the surface of the water and the electrode. Then the spark disappears when the electrode is submerged into the water. This is because the tap water is slightly conductive, so we are actually shorting the circuit when the electrode is submerged.
High voltage DC can also create the phenomena called ion wind. Ion wind is created due to the polarized high voltage electric field, which the DC current lets the electric field flow from positive to negative. The positively charged air molecules are then attracted towards the negative electrode. The flow of air molecules, or wind, is thus created by this principle. However, this particular example of the motion of aluminum foil can be explained better by the electrical force created by voltage. Here's an example of high voltage AC experiments, a simple Jacob's Ladder. We'll discuss the physical characteristics of high voltage AC in a future video. This is a better example of ion wind. The cylindrical electrode is the negative, and the electrode in the center of the cylinder is positive. As the strong electric field is created between the electrodes, the air nearby is ionized and attracted towards the negative electrode. The neutral air molecules then gain momentum towards the right direction, and thus wind is created. You can see the wipe hanging on the clamp is moving due to the wind. Here are some practical applications using high voltage DC. This is a cold cathode x-ray tube. X-ray photons are created inside the vacuum tube when electrons from the cathode are attracted towards the beryllium electrode that is connected to the positive electrode. The accelerated electron hits the positive electrode and produces X-rays. You can see my radiation detector is excited. We will do lots of experiments in ionizing radiation in future videos. This is an old-fashioned cathode ray tube. The white layer inside the vacuum tube is a phosphor screen. When the electron beam strikes the phosphor with high enough energy, the phosphor emits a visible green light. Electrons are produced by a hot filament that is connected to 6 volts DC current in the back. The electrons are then attracted towards the positive electrode. We know the glass is a good dielectric material, but some of the electric field can penetrate through the glass, so electrons are attracted towards the phosphor screen. In upcoming videos, we will do some science with plasma and their applications, some chemistry, material science, and biology, and finally, some particle physics with this particle accelerator we are building.